Easy one. What is your favourite project? You've done? <coughs> project. That doesn't have to be Doctor Who. That could be whatever you like. So I've been very lucky in that I've done an awful lot of different projects over the years, mostly um, documentary, sort of as opposed to sci-fi, which always surprises people that most of my work is is non-genre. Um, and given that we are in a digital age, for me to get a show called The Last Day of the Dinosaurs was fantastic. And once I sat down with the producer and with the digital effects team and we worked out <clears throat> what the show was going to be, it was a 90 minute Discovery Channel documentary about the asteroid that wiped everyone out. So it's 90% CG. But they said to, to me, we've got this one sequence where after the asteroid has impacted, this tsunami comes in and hits the coast, takes out a forest, so a prehistoric forest, and kills a herd of triceratops. So I got the lovely job of building this huge, one-sixth scale, miniature prehistoric forest with puppet triceratops dinosaurs in it. And then it was all built in the, um, in the tank in the studio floor in the middle of Twickenham stage one and two enormous great dump tanks releasing thousands of gallons of water and there was a point that I'm standing there on the set the day before we did it thinking I've just been paid by, by Discovery Channel to build dinosaurs make a, a Ray Harryhausen Willis O'Brien style prehistoric landscape in a world where they could have done all this digitally and they still let me play with this. That was brilliant. Uh, I'm really chuffed with the end result. It, it cuts in really nicely. But just to be able to do something like that, where I thought that sort of work would always be in the hands of the digital artists, gave me a huge amount of pleasure. Huge amount of pleasure doing that. Um, for me, I, I think I'm a, a lucky fellow because my nine to five, in inverted commas, job is sculpting portraits, and it's a lovely job. It's a nice thing to do. It, uh, it gives me the opportunity, if I'm offered something else nice, I can either think, oh, like, oh, do I fancy that, or do I not fancy that? It sounds very grand, it isn't as grand as that, but it's a lovely position to be in. And about a year, uh, two or three years ago, no, actually it's more, must be five years ago now. Um, interesting you talk about Jerry Anderson stuff. I, I was involved in a, um, a, a, a revamping of the original Thunderbirds style on three new episodes, which were for the anniversary of Thunderbirds. And um, which I, I so enjoyed. I originally started, I did one head for them, and um, and they're all new characters, which is nice, and they have, but they're in the style of. And I remember taking the head down to the studio, and what they they rather cleverly managed to get hold of or, or install themselves into one of the old slough buildings where the old um, series were made, and they you know they had the gantry up, you know, for the puppeteers, and there were lots of models, and I I took this head down on a Sunday, and I was just. You know, I feel like I've done a lot of things and I'm not easily kind of sort of swayed, but I, I was just so overwhelmed. I just thought, this is amazing. All the puppets were hanging up, the obviously ones I would recognize. And there were models and the little sets and the little, and everybody, it was the day before they started rolling the first sequences. And um, I was so utterly bowled over by it. I thought, oh God, I could just stay here. And the the, I, I handed over my sculpture, and, and the, 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 the guy in charge, Stephen Lerivier, said, well, that's great, thanks, Steve. And, and I said, well, if there's anything else, I was so sort of excited, if there's anything else, you know. Oh, well, unfortunately, we've, we haven't got the money. We're getting, we've got two villains in the last episode, but we don't have the money, we're going to redress a couple of old puppets. And I said, oh, I'll just do them for nothing. Like this. <laughs> Pathetic, really. I know, right? I said, oh, no, no, I'll do them for nothing. But to his credit, he said, all right, well, look, go away. Like, go away. <laughs> go away. It, and I'll, if I felt off only on Wednesday, 
And if you still feel the same, see, because I know that you said I could see you're enjoying being here. If you still feel the same, then I'll yes, I'll bite your hand off to do it. Um, and he did phone, and I did still feel the same, and I haven't regretted it because it's turned into it's a lot of quite interesting work with them. In that they specialise entirely on, on all the stuff that you know we were bemoaning a bit earlier. But it's fascinating to watch, and it, in the little bit I have learned with that stuff is that that depending on your audience, they will just overlook the strings and the fact that they can't walk properly and all of the, the things that we know about. Um, if the stories are interesting and if the characters are interesting and, and all of that. And interestingly, in Japan particularly, there's still a massive thirst for that slightly old-fashioned look and that, that model work and so on. So I would say, in all honesty, uh, that, that in recent years anyway, that's been a really exciting and diverting thing that I, I wouldn't have imagined uh, coming my way. So I'm hugely grateful, really. Uh, I'll go with a non-sci-fi thing. Um, about 10 years ago, I was having a meeting with Kate Bush in her London flat, <laughs> and she told me that she was going to do some live shows in London, and she wanted me to be involved in the whole creative process of staging them. And so that was a lovely project for me, working on her live shows at Hammersmith, because it was with her and she's about and I got to build masks, puppets, there were wings, there were kind of all the kind of things that I do and I like doing. Um, and it was a, an extraordinary live event, really, that um, I felt very privileged to be a part of. That's a good one. Yeah.